This is an incredibly beautiful nebula called NGC 1333 that has just been imaged by JWST. It's an enormous cloud of space dust and gas. It lives 960 light years away in the Perseus constellation on the sky, is a star forming region, and it plays host to a few surprise objects too. The nebula was first discovered by a German astronomer called Edvard Schoenfeld in 1855, and now we're seeing it as we never have, in more detail than ever before through Webb's infrared eyes. As we sweep across the image, we see large patches of orange. These are regions where gas is glowing brightly in infrared light, thanks to emission and radiation from young stars heating up that gas. These young stars are forming in the clouds of this nebula, as gas and dust clumps and collapses under gravity, eventually igniting nuclear fusion in the centers of these clumps, and hence stars are born. These stars and the glowing regions of gas are known as herbig harrow objects, and I've actually talked about them in a couple of videos before, so I will link those in the description if you're interested, and one might even be in this corner up here too, so you can click on that if you like. The entire nebula has a mass about 450 times that of our sun, which isn't too huge in the grand scheme of the universe, but is pretty big compared to little ol' us and our planet. There are about 150 stars in NGC 1333, and they have a mass of about 100 times our sun when all combined. There are even about 95 bright sources producing loads of x-rays, but I don't think those are visible here as JWST is not sensitive to x-rays. Lots of the young stars in the nebula are surrounded by disks too, and these may well go on to form planetary systems in the future, although we can't see any of those yet as these stars are all too young. However, on the right of the image, we can see the shadow of one of these disks edge on. It's visible as two dark cones, backlit by a bright background of infrared light. It's really awesome. The image I've been showing you is actually the nice cropped version that's super neat, but we actually have access to the wider field view. But here we can really see the frame of JWST, how it imaged the sky, and the image as a whole has a bit of an odd shape as a result. It's pretty cool, but I will stick to the cropped version for most of this video. The center of the image shows thin but highly detailed layers of dust, and the detail we can see them in is really mind-blowing, since this nebula is literally five and a half quadrillion kilometers away. There are also stars all over the image. Many of them are large and bright, and hence they have the six-pronged diffraction spikes that JWST is now famous for giving to bright objects. There are others that are much more hidden in the dust, and hence look a lot fainter just appearing as pale dots throughout the nebula. Close to those stars, the clouds are lit up in bluer colors as the dust is bathed in high energy light from these new stars. However, a few of those faint dots aren't stars. JWST is so sensitive that it can detect relatively low mass objects as well as massive stars and whole nebulae. At least three of these dots are in fact newly formed free-floating brown dwarfs, sort of failed stars that have masses comparable to those of giant planets. Across the whole image, there are six brand new planetary mass brown dwarfs that have been found. So let me know if you can spot the other three in the comments down below. Just like the new stars in this nebula, our own sun would have formed inside a gassy and dusty cloud like this, or perhaps even more massive. But that would have been 4.6 billion years ago. The stars here though are just one to three million years old, so they give us a really cool opportunity to study stars like our sun in the early stages of their lives, helping us learn about where our star and our planets came from. The nebula, NGC 1333, has been imaged before and was even a famous Hubble release to celebrate its 33rd anniversary back in April 2023. That image, while beautiful, contains many fewer objects compared to the JWST image. This Hubble image is a combination of near-infrared light, visible light, and UV light, all of which Hubble can detect. To Hubble though, the dust and gas in the way of some of the objects block a lot more light. But for JWST, observing in purely infrared light and with its much larger mirror, we can see through a lot of that dust and gas way more, and we can see many objects in incredible detail as a result. The new JWST image was taken as part of a program to study NGC 1333 specifically, and this is the first deep spectroscopic survey of the area. 
The brown dwarfs were identified using the Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, or NEARIS for short, and this image was made with NEARIS data too. That's something a bit rarer for images released by JWST, most of which are made with the NERCAM or MIRI instruments, so it is kind of cool to see some NEARIS images too. Anyway, I think the image is beautiful, but I would love to hear your thoughts or your questions in the comments below too. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you sometime soon on another video. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!